I'm Mike Simmons. I'm the founder and president of Astronomers Without Borders, where things like this happen on a daily basis, where things, uh, some, there's always some sort of a glitch. Uh, I'm really happy to, to have this chance to have a uh, hangout to uh, wrap up Global Astronomy Month, but also look forward to a few other a few other things that we have coming up during the year as well as next year. Global Astronomy Month has been a fantastic um, uh, event going back the last few years and uh, <clears throat> this was a follow-up to 100 Hours of Astronomy in the International Year of Astronomy in 2009 and it's really grown to become the world's biggest uh, uh, annual event uh, in astronomy. So uh, we've got several guests with us from around the world as well, as well as the principals, some of the people whose names you have seen in notes, uh, who are going to have a chance to, to talk a little bit about what's gone on during the year uh, or during this past month as well. So uh, thank you for joining us for this and uh, look forward to showing you some of the things we're doing and some of what's coming up as well. So um, Jessica uh, Sanders. Tiskoy is our, our uh, is the GAM manager for 2013. Jessica is in New York City, uh, a place where stars usually don't appear much. And uh, uh, Jessica, I wanted to ask a few questions of you and and see what you thought about doing this. Jessica was previous previously with the Astronomical Society of the Pacific and uh, running the Night Sky Network there or working on it. So this is quite a change for you, Jessica. Uh, what, 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 what are your impressions? And what do you think? I've just been blown away with how many people have come together around the world to do this amazing astronomy outreach. I mean, the Astronomical Society is, is kind of an educational organization that does outreach. And so it's, it's really been good to see this, this come together. It's been amazing at how many people are so generous. And then the variation of programming is superb, from astro art to educational, observing, online programs, and they're all overlapping, so m all of them are educational, let's say, and we have dark skies programming, a amateur astronomers all over the world are interested in dark skies, so it's just been fabulous. I I'm just astounded by the generosity of people. You did my forgetting. <laughs> so I got thrown a little bit. My notes disappeared. So <clears throat> we're winging it. But uh, so Jessica, you've been sort of been thrown into the eye of the storm uh, in this last month. Uh, and it is a little bit chaotic. And I think a lot of people don't realize that there are very few of us actually working in Astronomers Without Borders. A lot gets done with, with very little. Uh, it, it must have been a, a bit frustrating for you at times as well uh, as you're trying to chase things down worldwide. Um, yeah, it was a little frustrating, but the team that we're working with is so enthusiastic and we all just love what we're doing that the, the frustrations are minor when you're looking at the big picture and thinking about how people are sharing scopes or putting together programs. So it, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's trivial. It's just been a really great time. And, well, and to, give a, to, to give a sense of, of what is meant by global, I, I think it's worth pointing out I've never been in a hangout with this many continents in play. <laughs> um, so so I, I'd like to first of all say I want questions from as many comments as we have uh, represented in the hangout. And if you want to send us your questions, you can either tweet us with the hashtag uh, GAM2013, G-A-M 2013. Uh, you can post to our Google event page or you can leave a comment on YouTube. Um, now, to give a sense of just where everyone is from, um, let's, let's vaguely, by alphabetical order of continents, um, how many people do we have here that are from the Asian continent? Felina, I know you're in the Asian continent. I think you are, at least. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, wave if you're from the, the Asian continent. 
Okay, so how about the uh, Australian continent, which includes New Zealand? You're sort of dangling off the continent. So we have Australia. Do we have anyone in here from South America? No, we're missing South America. North America? That's Actually, we do. Uh, Marshall is from South America. Okay. Um, Europe. We're missing Europe. We're missing Europe, and do we have anyone from Africa? Yes. African. So, so we're doing really good at getting as many continents as is humanly realistic into this Hangout. So if you can all ask questions, um, and, and Mike, sorry to jump in. I just wanted to get that pointed out. No, I appreciate that. I, I was a little, uh, I appreciate uh, your, your joining in there, Pamela. And we should at least uh, give an introduction to Pamela, too. Probably everybody knows who Pamela Gay is, also Star Strider. But CosmoQuest is one of our many, many partners in GAM and beyond. And uh, CosmoQuest does these Hangouts regularly. They have regularly weekly programs of all kinds. And so they're our partner to produce these Hangouts for us. And uh, so we're glad to have uh, them to, to help us out. And Pamela to jump in once in a while to say to me while I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing as well. Oh, well. So we're going to talk to each of our guests in turn as well, and we have a lot of pictures to show uh, what's going on, what happened during GAM, and uh, we'll, we'll get to those as well, and introduce each one of our guests, and uh, to, to be a little bit more specific before we introduce them so people know what countries we have. We have Philippines, uh, Vietnam, Morocco, uh, we, we now have, I see, South America, which is Brazil, uh, New Zealand, uh, Ghana and Sri Lanka represented here amongst the uh, national coordinators and other participants, as well as those of us who are uh, sort of in the middle of it all. So, and another person who's in the middle of it all and has been for quite some time uh, is Thelina Hina Tigala. Thelina, I'm not sure after all these years if I pronounce your name correctly or not. Is that close? Can Thelina hear me? Is Thelina there? Thelina's video seems to be frozen at the moment, so maybe okay. jump to the next person. Well, uh, last last I heard, they're having big storms in Sri Lanka, and that always that always messes things up for us. So, uh, do we have? We don't have any comments or questions yet, Pamela. Do we? I, we have a bunch of people saying positive things, looks good, uh, good, one people, one sky, so we do have an audience out there, and no questions, but a lot of enthusiasm. Okay, okay, so I want to bring, we have a lot of people to talk to and to, to share things, and I want to bring some people in. Uh, one of the people who is, has been very active in Astronomers Without Borders from pretty close to the beginning is Marcelo Souza in Brazil. And uh, Marcelo is one of the more active people. All of these people are. Let's take a look at some of the things that they have done there. It's been a wide variety. And Marcelo, uh, welcome Marcelo, bon dia. Bon dia, bon dia. <laughs> nice to meet all of you. <laughs> so uh, Marcelo, what, what, uh, what is new for uh, Global Astronomy Month in uh, Brazil this year. What are the most successful things that you have done, do you think? Yeah, we have many groups in Brazil that participated in, in GAN, and uh, we also, this year, we had the support of uh, hangouts like this that we are participating, that we have here in Brazil, that popularized the, the GAN for all the people here in Brazil, for all groups. And uh, we also organized again our international meeting during the GAN, that uh, is part of the GAN here in Brazil. And I have some pictures here about uh, these activities that uh, I will share now. Jamie. Okay, in fact, uh, I have one here that maybe Pamela can uh, show on, on my screen that is uh, something new and, and something that uh, we're doing more of. Let me show that too, and then you can get yours ready as well. This is a uh, program of astronomy for the the site impaired, 
in which in and, and uh, Pamela, I'm not telling if that's being shared up there now or not. Oh, um, yes. This was a big success here. The first time we did this. Yes, and this this was uh, it, basically uh, you can see in the picture if you're seeing it, and I'm confused about whether or not uh, that's really what's up there at the moment. But uh, you'll see both the sight disabled and uh, people with blindfolds who are normally sighted individuals who are seeing uh, what it's like to not be able to see as they go into this tent to, to do things. Marcelo, tell us a little bit about um, uh, but, about uh, what's I have what I have seeing. some other images about the, this presentation. And the, oh, sorry, I will leave it here first. Uh, I will come back here on a moment. I will show here some pictures about this experience here. And the first time we try, we, we have here in Brazil, high school, here in our city here in Brazil, high school for, I'm trying to, I have to change here, okay. Sorry. Now, can you see the image of the experience that we do? Yes. Uh, okay. This is what we, we try to do. We this is a big shopping that you have in our city. It is the biggest shopping of our city, shopping center of our city. In the main square of the shopping city, we had the idea to make an experience uh, to show people uh, how the visually impaired uh, feel when they try to understand the astronomy and what we think we talk about the universe. And then they we made contact with a uh, school for for vision visually impaired people in our city. And uh, we had the support of this school and uh, all these people né, with this protection in, in the eyes uh, began a journey by the I'm now universe. This is was the name we call the experience. Here another pictures and the the guides are visually impaired people that studied in this school. Here you have some images of the, the guide here and inside the, the place we have the tactile models of the constellations, sounds of space, and most of the pulsars, and the, from the Sun and Jupiter, and the, also the the book written by Norin Grice, yeah, out the stars. Yeah. Right. They also we have models of the planets. Okay. Ice. Well, Marcelo, that that's fantastic. Again, in fact, uh, Noreen Grice and, and some others are part of the regular program in Astronomers Without Borders to help bring the universe to disabled people of various kinds. Uh, it's just another border. A lot of people are not included in astronomy very often. So this is a great program uh, for them. And we're going to have more to do with this throughout the year as well. So Marcelo, thanks very much for that. That's a different look at uh, how things are. I'd like to move along. Now over across the Atlantic, Sarah, um, and Sarah, you'll pronounce your, I hate messing people's names up, so you'll pronounce it for me, I hope. Sarah is in Ghana, the Ghana Planetarium, and this is one of the only planetariums, planetariums in sub-Saharan Africa, as I, as I understand it, that was done in collaboration with uh, some people um, in, in North America as well, and very, very active. and. Uh, I would uh, love to, uh, oh yes, people are still seeing my picture here, sorry. Uh, so uh, we, we'd love to hear about what went on in, in Ghana this year, and I think I have some pictures here we can bring up also. Okay, well hello everybody, it's great to, to be hanging out with everybody. Uh, yeah, I sent a few pictures in. Yes, as Mike was saying, I'm from the Ghana Planetarium, 
And yeah, as far as I know, we are the only planetarium basically across the whole sort of east to west uh, width of Africa. There's some in North Africa, some in Southern Africa, but uh, the whole of the rest, I, I think it's only us as far as I'm aware. I'm happy for people to put me right if I've, I've got that wrong. Um, so our programs, I mean, yeah, it's maybe different to quite a few of the other people. We, we don't do so much of the outreach and going out on the streets, but people come to the planetarium. But we try and uh, give them all different experiences. So it's not just, they don't just come and sit down, watch a planetarium show and go home. We do presentations and demonstrations and hands-on activities for the kids. And we do have telescopes as well, so we can do telescope viewing if it's not too cloudy. It wasn't too great this year, I have to say. So um, normally, because we're there's nobody, there's no paid workers at the planetarium. We're all volunteers, so we don't normally have that many uh, public events. But for Global Astronomy Month, we actually had an event every Saturday during April, and I was I was coordinating those. And the good thing this year was I managed to uh, pull in quite a few other volunteers. So we had quite a lot of people who said they would come and help out with the kids and help out with the activities. So each each week we had maybe three or four different activities that the kids could do and some of them were just you know fun we had made a solar system hat which was great um and then some were a bit more a bit more to it like calculating your age on other planets or measuring craters on the moon but you know you, you can't do that unless you have at what? least another you know three or four people to, to help with each of the activities so that was great that, that you know that's the first time we've had a, a group of volunteers so so that made a, a lot of difference to what we managed to do. Well, that's that's great, uh, Sarah. I didn't even realize it was all volunteer at the planetarium. That's uh, really incredible with all that goes on. And and I'd like to share some of the images that we have from your activities as well. And maybe you can say something about it. This looks like you uh, directing uh, traffic around the solar system here. I guess. <laughs> Well, this is. Um, we often start off under this kind of summer hut to do a bit of a discussion. Um, but uh, you know, I, I'm sure we we all know it's things like models and demonstrations really help people's understanding. So it's great to get the kids out and say, okay, you be the Earth. How does the Earth move? And get them to think about the rotating and the orbiting of the sun versus the sun. And I think that when I was actually saying, uh, we talked about the distances. So we've got the, the si relative sizes of the Earth and the moon. And then we're saying, OK, mm -hmm. how far apart do you think do you think they are? And it's always much further than, than people think. So I think I was pointing at the person to go a bit further. Yes, of course. And then it looks like you had quite a few kids. Uh, this is a very brightly colored group here. Yes, that's actually a ladies' football team. So, ah. in the newly started ladies' football league in Ghana, they came along. So I think that was the first uh, uh, event, and that was all on stars and constellations and light pollution. So it fitted in with the uh, dark skies event and the globe at night. So they were doing the creator constellation. I mean, I have to say, all all the activities in my emails, I always acknowledge who they're from. I mean, I didn't create that activity. It's on the internet, giving people a, just a, a group of dots and getting them to create their own constellations to talk about how different cultures have their own constellations. And, you know, although there are certain constellations we all use, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, other cultures don't have their own constellations as well. So that, that was their chance to create their own constellation, which was very popular. They really enjoyed that one. Oh, that's, that's terrific. And uh, the kids get into the act here as well. Yes, this was. We did this last year almost by accident. I, I had sort of thought, oh, someone else had this idea, and I thought, mm, well, okay. Then it was just sort of drawing a, a, a life size, not life size, a human size astronaut and rocket with a kind of cutout for the face. And we, in fact, we were going to paint it, and we didn't have time. But oh, okay, let's yeah, let's let the kids paint it. My, they absolutely loved it. Who wants to do painting? Wow, ah, they all went running. They all want to do the painting. But no, no, no. Some of you have to come back. So, so they paint it, and then the next, uh, you know, great thing is then all the parents just love taking photos of their kids with their, you know, their faces stuck oh, through sure. being an astronaut or being a rocket. So, I mean, obviously that's just a fun thing, not really educational, but the, the kids come along and enjoy well, it. It gets them involved. And by the way, I want to clarify on the last picture of the football team for those of you in North America. Football oh, yes. is what we call here soccer. Uh, hopefully most of the world that's watching us now will understand that, but a few of us are in a different place here. So. Good point, good point. 
And okay. uh, here, this guy's really intense. <laughs> this was, um, uh, we did an event on the sun. And now you can't really tell from the picture, but you know, Ghana, it's hot, it's in Africa, it's hot, it's sunny, had all these lovely activities, UV beads. I got my Galileo scope up, practicing the projecting, IP projecting. What happened? No sun. Was like, oh no, we can't believe it. So shelve all those activities. Let's think of something else. So we were doing something about the stereo mission. Uh, we had some some of those short NASA clips about stereo. And so as we were talking about why do we need two eyes, how what does that help us with? So we were getting them to close one eye and try and uh, touch two pencils together. So yeah, he was concentrating very hard. But it's quite funny because it is hard, but of course when I said, oh, it's quite difficult, isn't it? They were saying, no, no, it's easy. I can do it. <laughs> they didn't want to admit that it was difficult, even though it is quite tricky. But it's just showing the point of uh, you know, our, our uh, binocular vision and the, the two stereo uh, spacecraft, which allow us to see all of the sun. That's so awesome, Sarah. That sounds like a wonderful program. And that's what I mean about the generosity of people, getting all those volunteers together. That's just superb. Well, one thing I think uh, I, I've noticed, and Sarah, you can mention it. You say you don't have programs all the time because it's hard to do. But during Global Astronomy Month, you have quite a few. In a way, it gives sort of an opportunity to, uh, to uh, focus on things and to get more attention, um, which is something that would be just is a perfect result if if we if uh, if we have that kind of a result from from just holding them up. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, yes. I said we we deliberately did more events. We did every weekend, and that we were just telling people all the time, oh, it's Global Astronomy Month. And I also I sent out a mail asking people, you know, maybe you can do your own events. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything formal. Just get together with some friends, look up in the sky, you know, we send out sky maps and things. So just to encourage people to think about the night sky and think about astronomy during April. So, so uh, thanks very much, Sarah. That, that's terrific and a lot of fun to see. And uh, one person we have back who I called on before, who had frozen on screen and then disappeared. Uh, it was one of the problems with uh, living online these days is, is we depend on the network <laughs> connections. But Selena, and, and I made a stab at your last name, which I've never really uh, gotten for sure. I believe it's Hina Tigala, is that right? Almost. Very Almost. Close. Okay, yeah. good. That's that's better than what I, uh, I've i learned a little bit then. Well, Thelina, uh, we wanted to hear from you. Thelina uh, is known to just about everybody, both in AWB and outside. Uh, he's he's known all over the planet, in fact. But Thelina started as a volunteer with Astronomers Without Borders uh, several years ago. We worked together both uh, as a volunteer and and as he was our first employee. And uh, we didn't meet for like three years, and we finally got together. It was like being old friends anyway. Once we did uh, see each other. So Thelina is now in charge of communications and has done a fantastic job keeping the online world uh, active and uh, keeping people uh, involved there. So, uh, Felina, you, ha you have any comments you want to make about GAM, how, how, maybe how it's changed? Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> because uh, I remember, uh, no, I, I joined the AWB in 2009, and uh, like end of 2009, and we, we were all <coughs> discussing uh, what to do next, because it was in the, International Year of Astronomy, and we want to do something follow up with. And uh, so the Global Astronomy Month was a very natural thing to do. And but back then, for the, the for the first edition, we didn't have enough time. It was put together within like four or five months, and it was a very small program. But we had a good participation. But uh, we we uh, we wanted to do it uh, as an annual program. And and I still remember, like in 2011, it it was unbelievably like we, we thought we uh, gave birth to to a monster because uh, we ended up with uh, something close to closer to 40 programs, and we didn't have any staff, and uh, we we had lots of volunteers too, and we had so many so much uh, volunteer support all from all over the world. But it, it was unbelievable how what actually within within such a short year how things turn out, and uh, 
so ever since 2011 it has been only growing and and uh, and now we have actually more people helping out and things are getting more organized but uh, if you look, look back and I'm always like uh, fascinated by how these little ideas among eight of the people kind of grow into something really large and it, it and the, the best thing is it, this is not not just to one community or like set of people this is for everybody I, I mean anyone can do it and uh, I just uh, and I remember uh, like like uh, one uh, one thing I should mention is, is that uh, during the CAP uh, meeting, the Communicating Astronomy with Public uh, in 2011, and uh, every, uh, that's where we, we actually, we didn't even present the uh, GAM officially, but during the meeting we got the opportunity to, thanks to Pamela actually, uh, we got the opportunity to, to just to present it like very briefly. But uh, e even if it was such a brief uh, kind of introduction to GAM, everyone understood the, the value and important and how big it was. And uh, so I, I remember distinctly the, uh, at CAP 2011, it, uh, the GAM was one of the key things. And uh, so that was very encouraging to all of us. And uh, so it, it, uh, in 2012, it grew more. And now uh, I can I can only say sorry, very sorry for uh, Jessica because I know what she's gonna get into. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it has been a, such a fantastic ride for me. And now uh, I'm sure Jessica's gonna have fun with it and sleepless. Yes. Well, Jessica Jessica learned from her experience, and we'll talk a little bit about what we might do for next year. But I think a big part of it is Jessica is going to try and uh, get the rest of us in somewhat organized, which is is really a very big task. But there's an awful lot going on. But Jessica has been fabulous this year. Uh, it, it, Jessica, do you want to rebut anything there? <laughs> no, I agree. I think in uh, 2014 it's going to be bigger and better. And if people are interested in submitting a program idea, they should send it to us right away and you should start planning for 2014 it's it's pretty close and we'd like to get the word out now so you know they're, they're, it's never too early and we can just fly with it and really really go farther well we we've, we've never managed to really get things going on time as we should so it's always been a scramble but again uh, just like with Sarah it's been mostly volunteers and and uh, I have some things to show you about how we're sort of getting stuff together Together, uh, thanks to our supporters, but we'll save that for a little bit later in the hangout. Uh, I want to get uh, maybe a brief uh, uh, hello uh, in a few uh, comments from from Asia as well. We we have our national coordinator for Vietnam from uh, Ho Chi Minh City, Dui, and I won't pronounce your whole name, Dui, but if you have uh, some comments, and I have a few pictures I can show of uh, what took place in Vietnam as well, so. Let me bring those up while you're commenting. Do we? Do you have uh, a few things you'd like to say? You uh, need to year. unmute. Oh. There you are. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Uh, this year uh, we are so busy, uh, but uh, we just uh, ran out of time in uh, organize some uh, event uh, in response to the uh, program schedule of uh, AWB. So um, we have the staff is up. Uh, program uh, observation with um, uh, Philippines, Mr. James and so Christopher. Uh, we also have our old astro cam, our, our tra traditional astro cam uh, in the um, in the sea, South Bung Tau, uh, um, city. It's mean uh, nearly 100 kilometers far away from Port City. And then uh, at the end of April, so uh, we have um, uh, a trip uh, to uh, popularize astronomy uh, to a high school. Uh, mm -hmm. In my hometown, in Highland, in Balo City, so uh, we have um, uh, a wide range of area from coastal area to the Highland and also in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, and it's mean um, uh, from uh, Sunday, uh, we we also have um, uh, an activity in our astro camp. Uh, with uh, we use a solar filter uh, to have some participant uh, to observe the the sunspot and also. Uh, to draw some sunspot of the sun, and also they must fight 
the um, location and it means the uh, direction of uh, the, the solar or the solar disk. Uh, we also have uh, some, some presentation about astronomy, about uh, uh, the telescope, about the structure and how telescope works uh, for some participants because uh, uh, most of them are the, the new newbie. Uh, it means their first uh, view uh, of some um, celestial object uh, through uh, telescope. We also uh, have some crossword game and also some our handmade video about astronomy uh, to guide uh, participants about the, the sky in Ho Chi Minh City and also in Vietnam. Uh, so they can we know some uh, famous constellations, some famous uh, planets, and also some famous nebula in the sky. Uh, about the picture, uh, as uh, I posted uh, some pictures in the high uh before, so uh, uh, we have one picture about the telescope. It means my club uh, member uh, have some participants know about the telescope. Uh, on part of this and also how the telescope works. Uh, we also have a presentation about some uh, particular phenomena of the um, universe, like, uh, uh, you know, like meter shower, like uh, uh, aurora, and also about uh, the solar or lunar eclipse. It's, it also helps to popularize astronomy to community because uh, as all of you may know that in Vietnam, astronomy acquired new uh, structures. So everything just uh, is the beginning in Vietnam about astronomy. Well, that's, that's something I think that uh, a lot of people in my country, in the United States, don't realize that astronomy is really a very new thing in most of the world. And it's mostly, almost entirely, in countries like yours, uh, very young people rather than the people like, like me and my country or older and have been involved in astronomy for a long time. But this is something that young people do in Vietnam, uh, like in other countries throughout Asia and, and uh, other, other continents. Isn't that right, Dewey? Yes, uh, maybe um, uh, in our club, most of the club member is just uh, lower than 13 years old. So they are uh, just a student, most of them are students. And maybe uh, um, some people like me, just uh, a little bit lower than 13 years old. So uh, we are young and active member because uh, astronomy is, a, is an amazing subject for me. Uh, so a lot of people, a lot of younger people in Vietnam, they love uh, to find out and to study more about astronomy. So uh, this is one of the most advantages of the club. It means we are active and very young. That, that's fabulous, and you're doing so much to so much enthusiasm. I, I'd like to go over. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to talk with all of you myself for for an app the full hour, but we just don't have time. But I'd like to move across over to uh, a neighbor of the Philippines because you mentioned yeah. Starpiece and this is a, a fantastic uh, uh, program that actually is another partner program started by a group of students in Iran and uh, where, where observing events are shared between countries really one people one sky and crossing over uh, borders and I have uh, an image that I'll share of that but Christopher here is in the Philippines who is one of the partners you had in, in that event. So Christopher, uh, if I'll show the uh, star piece here and some other uh, pictures that, of events that went on during uh, Global Astronomy Month in the Philippines, if you have any comments that you'd like to share with yeah. us. First off, I'd like to thank this opportunity and in behalf of uh, our president, James Kennedy. Um, anyway, uh, that's showing as we you, these are uh, some of the activities that happened here last year. Christopher, you're having some audio problems and we can't quite understand you. Um, if you turn down the volume on your device, it may work much better. You'll need to unmute yourself. Sorry for doing that to you. <laughs> and I'll mention while uh, while Christopher's looking at that also that uh, this this picture is from the Philippines that uh, uh, Pamela will share with everyone. It mentions Starpiece and H A A C, which is 
a, a, uh, a group in Vietnam. So uh, along with Star Peace and Global Astronomy Month, the Astronomical League of the Philippines is, is the group that's represented there. Christopher, let's let's try you yeah. again. How okay. How's that? Sound better? Okay. That yeah, is better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as you can see on the banner, we have we have coordinated with uh, with uh, uh, Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh, uh, uh, Astronomical Society. Our group, you know, the free public viewing in our very favorite hangout, uh, known as the Rasuleman Park, right, right, very near the um, uh, right in Manila. Uh, and uh, what we did on the last week of six, we, uh, we set up our telescopes there and we featured uh, Jupiter and planet Saturn. And you know, you have to understand that, uh, like like in Vietnam, um, astronomy is not really a big thing here so in the Philippines. So it's kind of rare for, for uh, my countrymen to see us set up telescopes. So when they see us setting up something like that, it's like, it's like strange to them. So they will walk up. So we, we, we expect a lot of people always because the Filipinos are, are naturally curious. They, they look through our telescopes and you hear those oohs and ahs and We're having, a, um, Christopher, a little bit of an audio uh, problem here, too. Uh, I, I did hear you talk about how, how unusual astronomy is in the Philippines and uh, the oohs and ahs that people get, uh, people have when, when they take a look through a telescope for the first time. But I've got to tell you, as, as common as it seems that astronomy may be in the United States, it's very much the same. If you set a telescope out, you'll have a lot of people and very few will have ever looked through a telescope before. So you're really doing the same thing. And it, it seems, uh, I'm going to bring up some other pictures here, but it, it, looking at the pictures, it always seems like you have a lot going on. Yeah, uh, actually, there was, um, uh, after, after April 6th, we have a um, day, the day after we have April 7th, and we Sunday to feature the sun. We set up filters on our. We put telescopes. And we put filters on the on, on our telescope so that we could view the sun. Uh, it, it just happens that there was a sunspot during the time, and there's a series of sunspots at the time. So a lot of questions have been, has been asked. Okay. And after April seven, um, the last day, twenty six. Where once again we're in Raja Soleiman Park, and um, we featured this time is the moon. Uh, so at the time the moon was um, is in, in waning. I think it's in waning us already. So people saw the moon and um, the, they saw the, how different it looked to our telescopes. And once again the oohs and ahs and the the, the incredible. The, the, how how they how their face just lighten up when they s see these objects to work It's just amazing, um, uh, rewarding, rewarding experience to share the universe with uh, with our fellow countrymen. Okay, I'm talking into my muted microphone again. Sorry. Um, thank you very much for the the, the all too brief look at what uh, what's going on there. There are quite a few people and groups involved in astronomy in the Philippines that I see, so we get the idea that it's very active. But I understand most of the people there, like elsewhere, have not really had a chance to uh, look through telescopes and be involved in astronomy before. Um, so I. I'd like to move over uh, now back to Africa, but in this case, a different part of Africa. Really, to me, seems like another continent, northern Africa, Morocco. From Casablanca, we have uh, Madani Hatim, or actually, 
I think it's Hatim Madani, as we would say, your first name, Hatim, yeah. is that right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Hatim, but uh, the different uh, different names and cultures and things can sometimes confuse us. And you you were very active uh, this month as well, and you're relatively new to Global astro to uh, Astronomers Without Borders, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, hello, everyone. Yeah, so this like uh, the, the yeah. Do you hear me? Okay. There's some interference, uh, so we're getting a buzzing. I'm showing some of the pictures uh, that we have. Like I'm getting a very loud buzzing in my ear right now. Um, we have a picture up now, I believe, that shows Global Astronomy Month and some of the different activities uh, at a program yeah, as a in Morocco. As we did uh, each year, uh, we have uh, we had a contest with uh, our school clubs, with the UNESCO uh, Associated School. We have uh, now uh, five clubs in, uh, in different cities in Morocco, and uh, each year we organize uh, during during the, the the Global Astronomy Month uh, a national contest. And this year uh, the theme was the the light pollution and uh, dark sky awareness and we participate uh, to global night program so the pupils uh, made some measurements as you see in the picture uh, they uh, they did some measurements in the global night uh, program and they uh, they made some uh, audits in the streets to to measure the, the light pollution and the, the, the nature of the, the luminaries uh, used in the streets. And uh, this year we have a, uh, a good point because uh, the, the main association in Morocco, uh, in Casablanca, Rabat, the capital, and uh, in Marrakesh, have participated for the first time uh, together in the, in the game. And uh, this is uh, this is good because uh, next year I think uh, we will uh, will be more uh, we w th there will be more people uh, participating in the in the global astro remote. Uh, but as you like as you know, uh, uh, we have problems of uh, funds. We are all volunteers. Even if you w we we did uh, activities with the. Education ministry, we don't have uh, we don't have uh, help, so we have to 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 use our uh, own uh, uh, funds to to make some activities. But uh, I think uh, we have some good uh, some good uh, opportunities in the country because uh, uh, the Morocco is a uh, is involved in the, in, a, in a large uh, solar. Uh, Energy uh, politic and policy, and uh, we think that uh, astronomy uh, is waiting uh, for its time in Morocco because uh, with this huge uh, solar uh, energy uh, program, I think we can link astronomy with this uh, program. I have uh, already uh, been in contact with the, the solar energy uh, agency in Morocco. And I presented uh, our project for uh, school clubs. Uh, they say that uh, it's very interesting, and they maybe they will help help, help us uh, soon. So I think uh, maybe uh, next year we will be more uh, more active, and uh, we will uh, participate in uh, in a more uh, important scale. Mm. That's terrific, uh, Hatim. Thanks very much. Uh, it's great to see uh, more happening in Morocco. Uh, I, I've been to Morocco and Casablanca as well as Marrakesh, which I love. And uh, yeah, uh, you have to there. come back uh, to see. Oh, to see us. I would love to. And uh, also Tunisia and Algeria. I have some pictures from Algeria to to share as well. Uh, and you know, there's the, it is as in all places that. It's very enthusiastic volunteers who really uh, love to bring astronomy to the public, just like we do everywhere. So it's very similar to the activities we have in in, in every 
country, really, but always with a, its own cultural slant. And uh, another country I've never been to, but I really want to visit. We have one more guest here to share a few things with us. Uh, the National Coordinator for Astronomers Without Borders in New Zealand, and uh, Robert Mc McTogg. Is that how we pronounce it, uh, Robert? Sorry about that. Uh, that's pretty close, Mike. Uh, McTagg, oh. actually. McTagg, okay. Hi. Good. Um, yeah, no, no, we've had a pretty busy um, um, game 2013. Um, it's um, growing really nicely, I think, in New Zealand. We're well supported by um, clubs up and down the country, um, particularly um, two clubs in particular, our own group here in South Canterbury and the Horafanua Astronomical Society in the um, North Island. Um, both groups were founded about uh, the same time in 2009 as a result of the International Year of Astronomy. So I guess that's why they're, they're really, really strong on outreach. That doesn't mean there's a lot of other clubs. There's a lot of other clubs that have been going for many years who run regular events and get behind GAM. Uh, we were well supported by the Royal Astronomical Society of New Zealand this year, uh, which helped spread the word. Um, our two big planetariums, Carter and um, Stardome, um, had programs running as well. Um, they were very, very well supported, all, all mostly based around outreach. The thing that was most pleasing, I guess, this year is that the media up and down New Zealand um, supported us really, really well and got behind us. Now, Mike's just showing you an image of um, a young lady talking to a lot of young children about astronomy. And her name's Maya Barleaf. Now, Maya is from Pennsylvania in the United States, and um, 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 she's on a Watson Fellowship and traveling the world to spread the word to astronomy. She's been to the African continent. Um, she's to go to Indonesia after she leaves New Zealand. Maya was very gracious to um, respond to an email from me and, and spend four days with us in South Canterbury. And here she is pictured. Um, um, the room was packed out with over 50 children and parents, and here she is presenting a really interesting, interactive program to lots and lots of young people. And uh, there were many people from my local group who were standing in the back in absolute awe of how she was able to interact with the children. Um, it was one of many activities that were run in conjunction in our own area, my own area, South Canterbury, with our local museum. We brought them on board this year, the South Canary Museum, and they spent a lot of money um, supporting us, and they've had tremendous crowds through. Um, and in fact, we just heard yesterday as we were winding down that event that um, it was one of the best, or if not the best events that they've held um, with a community group. Uh, so this is their first time going out to a community group. Astronomy is not something typically seeing modern telescopes and displays you'd see in a museum, but it's worked really, very well, and um, and I'm sure we'll do it again in the future. Um, yeah. So, uh, Robert, I have to say I, I was just showing a, uh, a nice exhibition there, but I want to zoom in on something a little bit closer because there seems to be something going on here that I'm not really familiar with uh, in our country. So there's some people taking a look at this. Uh, now, everybody's going to have to excuse me if I, if I get the pronunciation wrong. This is an aureo, um, and it's a brass instrument um, that shows the positions of the solar system, and it was a centerpiece of the um, exhibition, and uh, very, very intriguing for lots of people um, for, of all ages. And here we have a young lady um, who's got her face painted, and face painting and craft activities form part of the exhibition as well for the young people and here they are um, having a good look at the Oriole and uh, one of our members on the right hand there Heather explaining to um, to them how it works yeah well I'm, I'm glad to hear that that's a face painting and not some strange uh, tropical disease I was like <laughs> 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 no, spooky. <laughs> okay and uh, you also have regular, uh, uh, the, the usual, let me uh, bring up a picture of some of your outreach uh, here. I think this is a beautiful, looks like a beautiful autumn day. And those of us up here have to remember that when we're having a nice spring day, you're having fall, autumn down under. 
and it looks like uh, the the leaves have turned along with the uh, hair on this child. These seems brighter than the the trees are. That is, yes, that's uh, photographed in one of the provincial areas around South Canterbury, a place called Geraldine, um, solar observing. One of the rare opportunities where we got to actually uh, get out and do some solar observing and night sky observing. The weather is, for April was absolutely atrocious this year, um, so we we're fortunate to have the inside activities, but w whenever the sky is cleared, we were out there with scopes at night time and during the day. and. Uh, and um, like everywhere around the world, there's lots of wows and oohs and ahs um, as they look at these things for the first time through a scope. That's great. Okay, Robert. Well, thanks very much for, uh, for that, for giving, giving us a look there. And uh, so, um, sorry, I see, see chatter there. Uh, that distracts me. Um, do we have any questions or comments coming in at all, Pamela? I don't see anything in the in the feed, so I, I guess no. The, Just okay. lots of enthusiasm and people sharing the how much they like the different people who are in here. Oh, that's terrific! Well, yeah, these are some of our favorites, but there are lots of people all over the world sharing. I'm going to show a few more photographs from some other places. I mentioned Algeria. This is this is right next to Hatim's country yeah. between Tunisia and Algeria. Yeah, but. Uh, it, it, uh, between uh, Tunisia and Morocco. Algeria is different though, but here here we see uh, a group holding a, a special event for another great global program, Universe Awareness, um, in this case uh, centered in the, uh, in the EU. And, you know, I'm always struck by the fact that th this, this picture could be from anywhere, except of course there's Arabic script on, on the back there, so I know it's not uh, in the US, but uh, they're, they're taking part in these uh, great events that, um, and programs that are part of uh, what the rest of us are doing uh, ourselves everywhere around the world. This is also a part of that Unawe, um, Unawe uh, universe, well, it's universe awareness. So this is for the youngest children, and this is part of the event going on in Algeria there. So uh, we have uh, things going on all over the world. So I'd like to bring up a few other pictures as well while I'm struggling to find those. Um, Felina or Jessica or anybody else, do you have any comments that you'd like to make? Sure, I'd like to direct people also to the um, GAM blog because there are tons and tons of stories about what was going on and you can hear from different people on their outreach and different outreach strategies that they used. We heard lots of them here on this panel but there are so many ways to get astronomy to the public and so that's, that's a good resource. Talena, maybe you have something to add about social media and outreach? Before that, I just want to say something about add something about the GAM blog. May I, Mike, uh, are you able to pull up the image? I have it up there now, and uh, all right. Cool. It, 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 this image looks super cool. I mean, uh, for the GAM blog, we had uh, thirty bloggers for thirty days, and trust me, this is such a hard task to get like thirty bloggers blogging one each day. And uh, we had six amateur astronomers. Uh, Ten astronomy communicators, seven professional astronomers, and five astrophysicists, and one astro artist, and a uh, one astro photographer. And they all came. They all came from about fifteen countries and spreading all over the place. And uh, as uh, Jessica pointed out, these these are really uh, good articles. And uh, you, I mean, I, I'm sure some of them, some of you, I mean, most of you haven't had a chance to read them because we had to write uh, articles every, every day throughout April, but uh, we'll be sharing them for a while and uh, I urge you to go and take a look at the camp talk because it, it, uh, so much uh, hard work went into that this and there's really good content in that. Great. And, uh, yes, along with the blogs, I just want to mention that we had Three other blogs running uh, for GAM, the Dark Sky Awareness blog, uh, and the Astro Art blog, and also Astro Poetry blog, which all three were active during GAM. And you can still see the content from during the GAM time. 
Well, I would like to also uh, say something about Dark Skies Awareness because that's an important part of every astronomy program, something that uh, we, all of us in astronomy are <clears throat> concerned about. And yes, that's it. And uh, so during uh, April, we also have Interna International Dark Sky Week. That's, this is run by the International Dark Sky Association, IDA, who are the leaders in trying to preserve the night sky for all of us for cultural reasons uh, and health reasons to keep darkness uh, as well as for the benefit of us astronomers and our ability to show everybody what their astronomical heritage really is. So this is a very important event that happens to be during, um, during GAM. It's, a, it's an example of a partner program and it's not something that we run but we support it and it supports GAM and so we work with uh, IDA as well as many other partners throughout the year and I went the wrong direction on that one. <clears throat> this is an example of a, a photograph that was taken uh, with lights on and off and, and uh, I'm sorry maybe somebody else will, uh, on here will remember why the lights are off here. I think this was a special event perhaps it's a earth night when or earth hour when no, the it, lights are turned on. It, yeah. it was for the International Dark Sky Week. Fantastic. So, and uh, yes, I, I just want to add something. Uh, now, <clears throat> this year actually, uh, the IDA took uh, the lead on the, in the organizing inter international dark sky week, and they did a they did a fantastic job bringing all, bringing all bringing in all these astrophotographers around the world. And uh, during uh, Global Astronomy Month, they they had. Uh, about 90,000, uh, uh, their, their reach on Facebook was uh, went up to 90,000. And uh, so <coughs> for them, it was a huge, uh, huge deal because it was such an increase from their regular uh, the reach on Facebook. Well, it's, it's the idea of working together. We can accomplish a lot more if we just pool our resources and, and uh, bring more people in. Uh, and it benefits everybody, so there's no reason to work separately. It works much better together. This is uh, Michael Uberdy, and uh, in this case, uh, you can see a little bit closer up his outreach. He's in the United States, <coughs> and he does a tremendous amount of work on uh, bringing the, the importance of the night sky to uh, people in his area, as well as working on programs that that uh, benefit uh, this um, uh, effort throughout the world. So, uh, and he's a very important, uh, very active member of Astronomers Without Borders in, in his area as well. So uh, that's, uh, any uh, other comments on the Dark Skies Awareness uh, things at this point? Uh, just uh, the, uh, on the Dark Sky Awareness blog, this one article I want to actually uh, highlight, uh, this article all uh, written for the statewide star party, which took place in North Carolina, and they celebrated the uh, uh, globe at night and uh, as well as camp. And they had 45 sites, uh, 45 observing sites throughout North Carolina on a single day, happening, uh, on a weekend, and uh, that was a huge success. And it, it, was, it was the first time they did something like that. And I'm sure they're going to repeat it next year. And uh, so. The, yeah, they included both uh, the Globe at Night uh, and SOS well as Camps. Fantastic. Also, Mike, you want to talk about the World at Night contest? They got a, a, a really large number of entries. Uh, they, they had a 20% increase this year. I think they got over 700 entries, and they recently announced their, their winning picture, didn't they? They, they did. Tell us what the, uh, the World at Night contest re is all about, Jessica. And I'll queue up pictures for her. Sure. Uh, Selena, maybe you can help me out. But uh, this contest has been going on for how long? Uh, since uh, they actually start the first contest uh, was without AWB. And then uh, from 2010 onwards, uh, we collaborated, as in UGAM. And because be be uh, before UGAM, there was one contest. Uh, I think it was for international astronomy. And so starting from 2010, it was collaborated uh, with GAMP. 
Right, and, and there's also a really, uh, as I understand it, there's a kind of dark skies initiative. These are astro astronomers really, really know the importance of dark skies, so it underscores that whole initiative. And um, anybody can submit a photo, and, and they're, they're just astounding, gorgeous photos, and, and uh, also of aurorae around the world. It's, it's just fabulous stuff. So uh, you can go to their website and see the winning picture. I don't know if you have that ready yet, Mike, but if not, people can go to their website, which is... Well, T-W-A-N-I-G-H-T dot O-R-G. That's the World at Night. The World at Night is actually a project of Astronomers Without Borders, but I consider this really more of a, a partner program. Babette Tafashi, who's now a very well-known astrophotographer and this kind of photography of Earth and sky together. Um, and here I am talking into my screen share again. Uh, is really the one that organizes all of this and, and there's very little support that he actually needs from Astronomers Without Borders. So uh, all the credit really needs to go to Bobak and the Twan photographers around the world that were hand chosen for this. And, and you know he found that it, rather than just a few people taking part in this kind of photography like it, it seemed he had just hundreds even thousands of people around the world who are sending in photos saying, well, I, I take pictures like this. And while they may not be up to the same level as these more professional photographers, they do fabulous work. So a guest gallery was started and eventually this, this photo contest. Um, okay. And I'm going to show a few of the winning photographs from that because these are really spectacular. And I also want to say this is a great outreach strategy. A lot of people don't realize that they can eventually work them, themselves up to this level of photography. So when they see these photographs and they know that just ordinary people are taking them, uh, they, you know, it's really exciting for a lot of people and they might get interested in astronomy. So it's really worth showing these pictures that are made by amateur astronomers. And these, uh, this is an example of one of the, there are two different categories in this contest. One is the beauty of the night. <clears throat> the other is um, against the lights, and this is an example of that. And this one is taken in Salzburg, Austria, showing the stars peeking out above the Alps, uh, above the brightly lit uh, city of Salzburg. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a few of these. I apologize, I may get through some of them twice. But you can see the, the different types here, clearly the beauty of the night in this one. It looks like it's, there we go, back to the right aspect ratio, the Milky Way rising. In this case, uh, over Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean. Wonderful. This is in Arizona, not that far from me, in California, against the lights also. Great fireball in Canada against the aurora. And these are all spectacular. I, I really suggest that you go to, the, even regardless of the contest, the World at Night uh, guest gallery, or regular gallery, as well as the guest gallery, just full of thousands of unbelievable photographs like this. And uh, the, the thing that always strikes me is, you know, where is this bridge? Where is this? It, it could be anywhere in the world. We really do share the same sky. This happens to be in my country. And this one's down in Australia, taken by Jeff Sims, who's an eclipse uh, uh, chaser and somewhat of an authority there, has taken some beautiful pictures of last year's total solar eclipse. And back here, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, it's pretty well known too. So those are some of the winning pictures, but if you want to see thousands and thousands more, I would just simply go to the, the uh, World at Night uh, uh, website uh, and take a look at those there. So we're sort of getting <coughs> along on here, and uh, let's see. Okay, and um, Jessica, I think you had a oh. comment. I'll leave it to you, Jessica. Do you want to comment uh, you, about the the uh, the guest blog and so on, or? Um... 
Uh, I just want to say that blog, I, I don't know if we mentioned this before, but it's run uh, by two, two women out of Indonesia. And they're both, uh, they both do astronomy, and so I just want to shout out to them. So, Kalina, yeah. could you say their names? Raven Yu and Aviva Yamani, right? Yes, uh, just a small correction. Uh, mm -hmm. Aviva Yamani is from uh, Indonesia, and Raven Yu is from Philippines. Okay. Uh, so, but they, they, they were the two who did the game blog. And also, I want to give a shout out to Samira Yu, who is uh, from China but uh, living in the uh, USA. She is the one who uh, managed the Dark Sky Awareness Blog. Yeah, and I also I noticed that Babak he just he just joined. Hi, Babak. We were just talking about your your amazing photo exhibit and that you've announced the winner. Uh, can you just say a few things? I was telling them that you've gotten unprecedented numbers this year, and anything you want to add or say? What what was exciting this year? You're muted. If you click the orange mic at the top, it'll unmute you. So how about now? Mm -hmm. Better. OK. So we had over 700 images um, as entries. And then we judged nearly 95% of them because they were so good, just simply stunning. So we are so amazed at how much uh, night escape photography or landscape astrophotography has developed during the past few years. And it's just uh, reaching many more people, many new countries. This year, we had great amount of entries from China, for example. It was the second most participating country to the contest after the United States. And there were so many good pictures from that country. Uh, as well from many other Asian countries, uh, a lot of pictures from Indonesia, for example, some very good shots uh, uh, from Chile, and uh, it was simply uh, rewarding for us to look at all those images. All, all the judges were quite surprised. So the, the contest result is now on uh, Tuan website, and the news is spread, spreading around uh, in a few hours. National Geographic website will post a gallery about it. I think uh, uh, Universe Today is going to report on it in a couple of hours. I'm going to write an article for Sky and Telescope website, and MSNBC usually each year uh, cover the contest news as well. And I can also tell you that um, uh, all, all the winner photographers are quite happy and surprised. We had, in fact, two repeating winners from the past years. Uh, they're from France and uh, a small island in, near Madagascar in the Indian, Indian Ocean, Reunion. It's also a French island. And these people are just winning each year. So we're going to invite them uh, probably to Tuan sooner or later. Otherwise, they will win all our prizes each year. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bob, thanks for joining us and talking about it. I did uh, talk about uh, Tuan and the incredible work you're doing. I think the contest shows how popular it is. I'm encouraging everybody to go take a look and browse through. <clears throat> so we're running uh, well over an hour here, and there are a couple of things I promised uh, something maybe in the way of uh, surprises, and I would like to uh, share a couple of things with you before we before we go. <clears throat> and uh, here's one that I would like to mention. Let's see. Where is it? This is uh, not entirely new, <clears throat> but it's unknown to a lot of people. Astronomers Without Borders has tremendous support from some of our supporters, in particular Celestron Corporation. Celestron is a big supporter of astronomy around the world, not just commercial. They, they were really doing a lot of work to help organizations like ours. And in this case, they are sourcing a telescope that is going to be the first Astronomers Without Borders brand. And this telescope uh, was recently shown at, at NEEF, an important show here in, in the U.S., and it was really a, a huge hit. It's a 5-inch Dobsonian with a parabolic mirror. It collapses down to a very, uh, from here down to a, a very compact unit. You can just pick up by the handle and, and take it away. Uh, so it's very portable. It's uh, high quality. It's actually made by Skywatcher. And Celestron is bringing it in 
entirely without cost uh, to to astronomers without borders, so that all the benefits from this go to astronomers without borders, and and it is available for pre-order on our store, which is just shop.astronomerswithoutborders.org. It we expect it to be shipping in. Uh, Probably about two months, middle of July, <laughs> but uh, the, the first shipment may go quickly. If you want to pre-order, we uh, we're, we're going to have a uh, mailing list so we can let you know when it's available. So I want to let everyone know, know about that. This has also been used in one of our programs. One of the samples is now in Tanzania, in East Africa, and uh, was given a really rugged field test uh, under the most challenging of conditions in rural areas, uh, dusty, rocky roads, and so on, because this is a, is a telescope we can use for our programs as well. So we hope to get support for bringing these telescopes in to uh, use in, in all of these different programs that we have. And uh, while I switch to another surprise picture I want to bring up, does anybody have a comment on, on yeah. the telescope that I hadn't thought of? Yeah, I'd like to comment that I have actually used that telescope very often in my classroom, and this is an excellent choose. It really has gotten very good uh, reviews so far, and I'm bringing it back up here because I want to show one thing. You can see the Astronomers Without Borders brand on here, and you'll see something next to it that will be unfamiliar to you, and this is what I want to bring up next. It doesn't look like the usual Astronomers Without Borders logo. In fact, it is not. And if I can get over here to the other, to show you a current screenshot of the Astronomers Without Borders webpage, and you'll see the same thing, and also some different branding up here. So Astronomers Without Borders is rolling out a new logo, new branding, that I think represents even better the idea behind Astronomers Without Borders. And I'm going to bring up one last uh, image to share here so we can all see this a little bit better and share with you what, what it is that we're doing. <clears throat> so here we have one of the versions of the new Astronomers Without Borders logo and uh, with, with our slogan, One People, One Sky. The logo is based on the idea that we are all sharing all different colors, in fact, around the world, that it's uh, based on the uh, all-encompassing sky that we're all sharing that same sky and and we're all kind of star people as well I like to think of it that way so this is the new astronomers Without borders uh, logo that is rolling out now and we're going to have new products and, and various other things to uh, that will encompass this and we're really very excited about it and we look forward to comments from around the world as well uh, I think as you know rebranding is always a difficult choice uh, and a difficult, it's, this has been going on for some time, but I think we really kind of hit it with this one. So I look forward to comments on that as well. So and I see in, in our chat right on here, some people are coming that they like it because uh, this is new to everybody else, uh, it, well, most of the people on this chat as well. So that is the new branding and uh, I just want to open up and say, you know, do, does anybody have anything else to say? Jessica, you may comment on on next year, GAM 2014, because I'm like the rest of us, uh, <laughs> you, you're actually planning ahead, and maybe we'll get this all in, in order uh, early this this next year. Well, I imagine all of the programs that happen this year will happen again. I mean, there will be some variation in the astro art uh, people who are lined up. But uh, Babak, will you be uh, doing the the contest next year? Oh well, yeah, we can yeah. just stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And that's kind of how we feel about GAM. We can't stop it, right? I mean, people, are, they love astronomy and they, they can't get enough of it. So, but if, if anyone has an idea for a program or anything, one of the wonderful things about AWOB is we're always open to ideas. We're on the cutting edge. We want to get out there and do stuff that other people haven't. And uh, so if you have ideas, send them to us. You can get a hold of any of us us on our on our web page or Facebook or Twitter and uh, so that's it the earlier the better let's plan it and let's go out there and and do astronomy well I, I think that's a great comment to close on we really are trying to do things that other people aren't doing and the way that we do it usually is 
not by making up new things, it's by bringing people together to combine. Astro Arts is a good example. Astro Arts, run by Daniela De Paulus, an Italian artist living in the Netherlands, it has brought in space artists of all kinds and is really expanding, and we, we have a lot more to come throughout the year uh, on that. But it combines astronomy and the arts, different cultures, uh, their, their engineering aspects to live performances, uh, moon bounce images going to the moon and back, uh, a whole lot of different things. And these are things that really surprise me. I never expected to have things happening like this. So um, and now one, one last thing I want to point out, Global Astronomy Month is the big month of the year, but Astronomers Without Borders isn't doing nothing in between. So we do have other programs, but we focused on Global Astronomy Month on this particular program. And we'll be back with some other looks at new things in Astronomers Without Borders. Perhaps on a monthly basis, we're looking at that. The Hangouts have been very successful so far. And so we'll be back to let you know about more things for those who are watching. If you're not a member of Astronomers Without Borders, just go to the website and sign up. There is free membership so that anybody anywhere in the world can join. We will always have that available. I'd like to point out that if you can afford it, if you're in one of the countries where you can do it, where we're doing better, we have supporting memberships as well. And we always, like every organization, like CosmoQuest that's doing uh, great things, we all need support. So if you have the ability to uh, help us out, become a supporting member, we invite you and welcome you and plead with you to do that as well. And uh, so that's, uh, I think, uh, uh, on that note, we should just say uh, watch for more from Astronomers Without Borders throughout the year. Check out CosmoQuest as well for more of their hangouts. They have fantastic guests um, through, throughout the year on a more regular basis. And uh, we hope to see you on our website and other programs coming up in the future. Take part. The sky is, uh, enjoying the sky is not a spectator sport. So join in and check out what we are doing for the rest of the year and our partners as well. So we'll, we'll advertise them as well. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to do, despite a few glitches that are always inevitable in these live programs. And I look forward to uh, having more interaction with, with all of you very soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye bye. Goodbye.